All right, folks, it is 1.30, so we are going to go ahead and get started and jump right into this. Um, so first off, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is John Smith. Uh, I am the teacher success manager here at Book Creator. Um, I taught special ed for 12 years. I was a technology integration specialist for seven. And now um, as the teacher success manager here at Book Creator, I'm responsible for webinars, trainings, a little bit of sales, um, just generally speaking, making sure that teachers are um, happy and successful in using Book Creator. So uh, I'm married, I've got three kids, nine, six, and three one of which is at the dentist with my wife and the other two of which are right over there next to me. And I'm just hoping that they stay quiet like they are right now. Uh, so that's cool. I uh, love golf and clean cars. Um, and I'd like to welcome my colleague, Suwan, who is here to help me today. So Suwan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm Suwan. I'm from a very unusually hot England. Um, I'm near Bristol at the moment. Uh, I work as a teacher support specialist, so help out on any any questions around the app. Uh, if you engage with the sort of chat within the app, then you might get through to me. Um, I'm married, I have a 12 year old girl who I homeschool, and I used to teach English as a foreign language for a few years. Yeah, that's me. Awesome. Well, great. Um, so just a couple of quick things about today's webinar. This is specific uh, for accessibility options. So this is going to be a short and sweet webinar today. Um, it is not going to be a getting started with Book Creator webinar. So I'm not going to go into all of the deep features that we offer, um, but I will go into the ones that have that are, um, you know, accessibility wise that are more important for that. Uh, so uh, hi again, Mohammed. Uh, welcome back. Um, so anyway, I uh, just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Uh, we do have other webinars. So if you go to bookcreator.com slash webinars, you can sign up for all of our future webinars uh, in the process of scheduling all of the ones for July. So we've got some really cool new ones coming out in July. So I'm very much looking forward to sharing those with everyone. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different than maybe some of the other webinars um, that I have uh, presented. Oh, yes, yeah, so getting started one in about an hour and a half. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Thank you, Suwan, for the reminder. Uh, I, would, I don't know, I probably would have been out eating lunch or something. Um, so yeah, we have another webinar here in about an hour and a half. Um, but it's a little different. I don't have a set uh presentation for you today uh, set up like I usually do, but uh, we're going to talk about all of the in uh, the features, uh, the accessibility features within Book Creator. So I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to jump into just a, uh, a blank book here so that we can talk about accessibility. And I just want to say that accessibility is important to us here at Book Creator. Um, so it is, has always been kind of the mission of Book Creator to provide a platform for students and teachers to publish their books digitally. Um, and, and really just the fact that we want every student and every teacher and every person uh, to be able to publish those books. And so we have, we pride ourselves on making Book Creator as uh, accessible as we possibly can. And we're always trying to make tweaks and things to make it even better. Uh, and obviously it started with the iPad and now we have moved on to the Chrome, the online version, and we want to keep that accessibility uh, going. All right, so we're going to look at uh, quite a few different options here. Uh, we actually just made, um, I guess it was a couple months ago, over 230 improvements to our accessibility features. And so we're going to go over some of those today. Uh, we're not going to go over all 230 of them uh, in the next half an hour or so, but we will talk about some of the ones that will probably make the most sense uh, and be the most important to all of you. So the first one that I want to start with is dictation. All right, so if I click the plus button up here to the top right, and if I click on this text button, or if I go to media and click on text, we now have um, uh, support for 120 languages in dictation. So this is phenomenal. And I'm very excited to share this with you. So with dictation, uh, we have a text box that pops up. And I always kind of giggled about this because, you know, I, I could just type in, you know, a name or type in a sentence here. But my students, um, my special ed students specifically, uh, would always argue with me, right? We can't type, we can't spell, uh, we don't know how to um, use the keyboard, right? And I would, I would tease them and say, it's okay, because neither do your teachers. Um, because I've seen their emails, they can't spell, they can't type, 
And they certainly don't know where the keyboard keys are because I've seen them clickety clacking, you know, hunting, pecking for letters and things like that. And so I told the students, I said, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to write with our face. All right. And so I always told them that and they thought that was hysterical. And so with the microphone, we can click on this and we can actually write with our face. And so a couple of things um, that you need to be aware of with the um, speech to text and the dictation here is that the very first time that you try this, by default, it's probably set up for English, um, but it is available in 120 different languages, all right, which is amazing. But there's a little bit of a trick in order to get that to work. So first things first, you're going to click the microphone. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about this before I do it, because if I make any noise, it kind of messes things up a little bit. But before I do this, um, I'm going to click the microphone. A drop down is going to appear kind of here in the middle-ish of this text box. And then you're going to click the drop down again with as little uh, noise as possible. You can click the drop down, and then you're going to choose your language. Once you've chosen the language, then you can hit the microphone and just stop it. All right. And then you're going to delete whatever text is there. And then you're going to start over because that text, or I'm sorry, that drop down will remember that language the next time you use it. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go into silent mode. I'm going to click the microphone and show you the drop down. Okay. So as you can see, there was the drop down. All right, so 120 different languages. Now I'm gonna stop this because mine was set up for Spanish and obviously this makes no sense right here. So I'm gonna delete this. And now that it's set up for Spanish, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna do this again. So I hit the microphone, cuando es tu cumpleaños? All right, and I can go back in here, put a question mark. I know I need to put another question mark in here, but I click done and now I have my speech to text in Spanish. If I click the inspector, I can change the size of the text, left, center, right, justify, bold, italicize, or underline, change the font, change the color, change the background. All right. And so what I really like about this is that the speech to text is very good. Um, when I talk to my phone and I try to get Siri to talk about what I'm doing um, or to speak to my phone using Siri, Siri thinks that I have a, a mouthful of marshmallows. I don't know what it is but she never understands what I'm asking. But with Book Creator and Speech to Text, it is phenomenal. That It is very good at picking up what you're doing. And when you put in those different languages, um, it even puts in uh, like the, the little, I think it's called a tilde here in Spanish, right? It even puts those in. So this is a really amazing tool uh, and it's definitely worthwhile to, you know, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, again, from an accessibility standpoint, if you have students who do not have the ability to use their, uh, their hands or their arms, then they can certainly use their voice uh, to do the typing. And so speech to text, dictation, 120 languages is our first one that we would like to share. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and delete that. The second feature that I would like to highlight is the ability to add captions to videos. So I'm going to click on the plus button. I'm going to click media and I'm going to click on the camera. All right. And I'm going to record a video. And you're going to record the video in um, whatever language that you would prefer to record it in. So mine is obviously English. So I'm going to click record, gives you a little countdown, gives you that last burp, get it out of there. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Smith. I hope you are having a great day today. And I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to use the video. And now that video is added to my page. And so I think most of us have done this to uh, some degree, at least if you've used Book Creator before. But from here, this is where things get really cool. If you click the video once so that it is outlined in blue, and then click the inspector button up here to the top right. I now have the ability to add captions to my video. Now I think something hiccup there. So I'm going to refresh the page here. Hang on one second. I'm going to click the video, click the inspector. There it is. I'm going to click on this button that says add captions. So when I click add captions, it's going to give me that option to choose the language 
So again, we have a drop down 120 different languages. These are all of the languages that are supported in Google. And if I were to speak in Spanish, I could choose Spanish from the drop down and it would make Spanish captions. Because I spoke English, I choose English from the drop, drop down, it's going to make English captions. So it won't translate those captions. All right, but I'm going to click generate automatically. And it's going to take 30 seconds to a minute. And what it's going to do is it's going to make those captions. You can see these bouncing dots. You do not have to watch those. You can click the back button, get out of there, continue making your book, and it will continue to update those captions. All right, so when the captions are finished, a little, um, uh, not a warning message, but a little message will pop up down here at the bottom, letting you know that those captions are finished and you'll be able to see those on your video. All right, so again, it is really awesome that it will do that in 120 different languages. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna click play. Let's see if we can jumpstart those Good captions. Good morning, everybody. Oh, there they are. All right, there's my message. So I'm gonna click play again. Good morning. Oh, and when I hit pause, it kind of goes Good away. Good morning, Let me everybody. See. My name is John Smith. I hope. All right, so you can see the captions in Player. the video. Oh, geez, I keep hitting the pause play button. From here, if I click the ins Player. inspector and then hit uh, captions again, I can see uh, right here there's a button that says edit existing captions. So I noticed a mistake. So I'm going to click edit and I can go in here and see there where it says there first, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't want that. I just wanted to say good morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Smith. I do not have an H in my name. I hope you're having a great day today. Maybe I make that an exclamation point. And then I just hit done. And now my captions have been updated and changed uh, to be the right way. All right, so you can add captions in 120 different languages. I think this is really amazing because especially for people with visual impairments, if they are reading my book, and they see the video and they see the text, but they click the video, they may, they're not gonna hear uh, what's going on, right? I'm sorry, With if you have like hearing impairments, they're not gonna hear or see what's going on. So if you click the caption button, you can now read the video. So I think that's amazing. I think it's a great tool. All right, so definitely worth um, checking that out. And, and also not just for people with um, visual impairments or hearing impairments, I used to use captions all the time with my students who, who struggled to read. I would turn on captions so that that way when they're watching their favorite movie, they were able to see the captions that go along with it. And it really does help students uh, learn how to, to read a little bit better. All right, so that is captions. All right, the next one that I wanna talk about is adding a transcript to audio. So if I click the plus button and go to media and click on the record button, I'm gonna start the recording. Again, it gives you a little countdown. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Smith. I hope you love Book Creator. I'm gonna hit stop and use recording. Again, same thing applies, right? If somebody has an, uh, a hearing impairment and they see a, a play button in a book and they click on it, it's not gonna help them out, right? They're not gonna be able to hear what's going on with that audio button. But with this new feature in the accessibility options, if I click the inspector, I can click on this button that says add a transcript. So again, I choose the language that I spoke and say generate automatically. You do not have to watch the bouncing dots. You can click the X and get out of there and continue working in your book. But while it's generating those captions, I do want to tell you a little bit of a story. And, and it kind of just tells you, um, kind of it brought this real like close to home for me. So I was on a phone call, I uh, tried to cancel my cable service a while back. And as I'm on this phone call, this blood curdling screeching noise went through the headset straight through my brain, right? It felt like somebody stabbed me in the head with a knife and it was awful. My ear was ringing for a while. And after about an hour, I realized that I actually had lost hearing in my right ear and it actually lost it for almost 15 hours. And so for 15 hours, I was right here with everybody else who has hearing impairments. And I realized that if I'm reading a book and I see this audio button, I'm not gonna be able to understand what's going on. And so with this ability now, with this accessibility feature, when I click on this, I can see the text that goes along with that audio, which is awesome. Again, I can click edit. 
that I could go in here and make my changes that I see fit. But now people with hearing impairments not only can read the text on the page, but they can read the text that goes along with the audio button. All right, so I think that is really easy and yes, yeah, super easy to change. Uh, could be a game changer for lots of people. All right, so that is the ability to add an audio transcript uh, to an audio button. All right, let me go ahead and delete that. Another one that I wanna share with you in terms of uh, accessibility options is just with an image. All right, so if I go to Google and I search, whoops, search an image here, find a dog, I click on this one, and then, um, oops, let me move this up. I hit select and add that image to my page. So I've got this image on my page, which is great uh, if you can see, right? But if you are somebody with visual impairments and you cannot see that image, it's not gonna help you out any. Um, especially if I hit the play button here and have that book read to me. So it will read all of the words, it will play all of the audio, it will play the video, but it won't read the text or it won't read the image until you click the inspector button and you click on right here where it says alternative text for the image. So here I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna type in white fluffy dog on a deck and now I'm done. And so when that book is being read to a, an individual, it will also read the description that goes along with the picture. All right, so this is really, really awesome. All right, again, another tool that's great for, for students and just uh, anybody in general. It's great to have those accessibility options in there. All right, the next one is the ability to navigate through Book Creator using your keyboard and not necessarily the trackpad. So you may have some students who have the dexterity to click on keys, but not use the trackpad in the traditional kind of sense. So for this one, I'm gonna click on the tab button. All right, and once I click the tab button on my uh, computer, again, I'm in Chrome, you can see that it highlights this box that says my books. So now instead of using the trackpad to move across my page, I can click tab and it will go to the pages view. I can click tab, it goes to undo. And then again, I click tab until I go to where I wanna be. Then I can click return and tab again. Maybe I wanna to go to my media. So I click enter, tab across the top and then tab down. And so I can click on the pen tool, for example. And now I can use my keyboard to draw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the space key with one finger and with another finger, I'm gonna click the arrows. I'm gonna hold down space and I'm gonna click the arrows and I'm going to draw my image. So maybe I'm going to draw, um, I don't know, a house, right? So I'm gonna to go to the house here. So I'm gonna, and so it kind of looks like an old school, like Etch-a-Sketch, right? So you can see I'm drawing my house using just my keyboard and the space bar, All right? So that's not too bad. That's not too bad for old school Etch-a-Sketch style. Oops, I messed up on the foundation. All right, so there you go. Now, another trick that I was unaware of, uh, I'm gonna click the little arrows here, drag my cursor down a little bit further, but if you hit shift and space at the same time and then draw your arrows or click on the arrows, you can actually make bigger keystrokes at the same, uh, bigger keystrokes than you could before. All right, so that's how you can draw using your keyboard. Now, again, same rules apply. If I click the tab button, I can click on colors. Maybe I want to scroll all the way through these colors, or if I can, I click on the magic ink, then tab across, maybe go to my fill bucket, and then I can just click my little arrow here and find where I want to, uh, where I want to enter that uh, fill, and I just click the space bar, and it fills it in. All right, now I clearly messed up on my drawing there, but you can see how it's filling in. Uh, whoops, I clicked something different there. Sorry about that. Let's undo all of that. There we go. So you can use um, the space bar to do all of that, right? The tab bar and the space bar. You can even click on the plus button, media, pen. If I wanted to, I can tab across to where the emojis are. Hit return 
and then again tab across and I can click through all of the different emojis right that I want all right so I can find the emoji I want hit return and there the emoji is now with emojis with objects with shapes I can also uh, click the uh, arrow button to move the shape. So once the shape is outlined, I can click the arrows up and down, left and right, and move it. And if I hit shift in the arrow key, I can move my shape in bigger movements. All right, so we'll hit done. So that's navigating using your keyboard, that's drawing using the arrow keys, um, all of that. All right, so those are some of the accessibility features here within Book Creator. All right, I'm gonna take you to our website here because I do want to share a couple of other things. So if you go to bookcreator.com and if I click inside the search bar here and type in accessibility, it will pull up our blog post on accessibility. All right, so we do have some, um, some blog posts here, five easy accessibility tricks. Um, but this is our newest one. So if you click on the 230 plus accessibility improvements, I do want to share a few other things that aren't necessarily um, something I can show you, uh, but I definitely want to talk about those. So we talked about dictation. Uh, this article, again, uh, quick little videos showing you how to access that information. Uh, speech to text, again, showing you how to do that, how to add captions, uh, along with some samples, how to add the transcript and audio recording, and then how to navigate using your keyboard. All right, um, a couple of other things that we've done. We've improved our color contrast, which I think is very important. So uh, on the left is the new, on the right was the old. All right, so we've improved the color contrast so it's a little easier to see and to read. If you scroll down even further, we have improved screen reader support. So we support the screen readers and they've been tested against Chromebox, Windows Narrator, Apple's VoiceOver, and the NVDA screen reader, right, which is awesome. And I love this right here. So for those of you who are totally into accessibility, uh, we are also WCAG AA compliant, um, and we've completed the voluntary product accessibility template. So if you really want to get into this, you can click here and you can view our VPAT and you can take a look there at all of that information. And so I just think what's important here um, as we kind of wrap up this, this shortened session uh, is what does it all mean for education, right? And Wendy Torres, um, you know, who's an accessibility expert, uh, I just want to read this quote because I think it's really important. These are great additions for accessibility and inclusion. But what is great is that everyone can benefit from it, right? Not just those um, individuals with disabilities. Um, and, and so she just wants to thank us, right, for, for adding these accessibility features uh, into Book Creator. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you here is a book that was written by one of our Book Creator ambassadors, right, Rosie McQuillan. And this is a book all about differentiated instruction and how to use Book, book Creator for differentiation. So we got uh, information in there about, um, you know, UDL. We've got information about how to change design elements, um, different functions of Book Creator that will help students who might have disabilities. So I definitely want you to take a look at this article and view this. Um, this information has been recorded today. It will be on our YouTube channel probably later sometime today, um, but it's definitely worth a while, uh, worth a look and something to think about as you are building, um, as you're building these books in the future. All right, so um, at this point, I'm gonna take some questions if you have them. I do see something here that may be a possible demonstration uh, that might need to happen here. So Suwan, what do we what do we got going on? Um, we've got one question from Tara that I've written down as she just wondered when you make video captions, sometimes they block like the face of the person talking. Is there a way of moving them? Yeah, so unless I'm missing something right now, there is not a way to change that. The, um, the, the text box just kind of shows up right in the middle of the screen. Um, but I will say that it's something that we can definitely take to our team and maybe find a way to Im include that in a future update where you can choose what portion of the screen uh, the, the, uh, the text goes to. All right, um, time to show how to make a choice board uh, with links. Um, yeah, sure, why not? So let's talk about a choice board and how we can do that. 
Um, so when you're thinking about choice board, I'm thinking of different types of activities that you might want your students to do. Is that kind of uh, where we're going with that? I think it was, uh, Tara, is that what you're thinking? Or are you thinking a uh, like a talk board for nonverbal students? She says for a nonverbal child. Okay, for nonverbal, excellent. So what you can do um, is you can go to media and maybe have the child start searching some images of things that are meaningful to them. Uh, so, you know, dog. So if we click dog, hit select, what you can do is you can take this image and resize it. All right, so I'm gonna put the dog there and, and we'll, we'll just pretend I'm gonna make multiple copies of the dog here um, just for the sake of time. But we'll pretend like these are different images. From here, if I click the plus button, media and record, I'm gonna record a voice, all right? And so my dog, his name is Chuck, all right? So I'm gonna click start. Chuck, use recording. And I'm gonna take that audio button and kind of put it right there. Maybe this is an image for lunch or maybe this is an image for bathroom or um, schedule or I have a question, right? Or something. Um, and so there are devices that help students with this. They cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, what you can do with Book Creator though is take this audio button, click on it, click the inspector and then click this little button that says make invisible when reading. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna make that button the size of the image. I'm gonna to go to play mode, read mode, and I can see that these images are here, but when I hover over the first one, the little uh, pointer finger shows up. So if I click on it, Chuck. now I've taken Book Creator and I've turned it into a talk board for nonverbal students. All right, so hopefully that helped Tara. Hopefully that answered your question. Suwan, we got anything else that I might be missing? No, nothing else. Okay, all right. Well, I wanna thank everybody for being here. I'm not gonna keep you uh, just so you can stare at my mug as you're spending time on your day today. Um, but if you don't have any questions, feel free to go about your business and have a great day. Happy bookmaking out there. Um, if you do have questions, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes and we'll go ahead and answer those. Um, but again, thank you everybody for being here and uh, definitely think about using those accessibility features when you make your next book for your students. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you, Mohammed. Uh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. Uh, D.L. Dean, he's back. Thank you, D.L. Dean, for being here. All right, we'll give you about two more minutes on the clock. Can we log into another webinar? Uh, so Mary, I actually have um, another webinar coming up here um, in an hour. So yeah, if you go to bookcreator.com slash webinars, you can definitely sign up uh, for the next webinar that I have. Yeah, and definitely thank you, Swan, for being the, the, uh, the kind of like the Wizard of Oz, right? The, behind the curtains, helping me answer questions. I appreciate it. All right, we'll give you about 30 more seconds. I'm not seeing a lot of questions in here yet. So 30 more seconds, we're gonna shut this thing down so I can get ready for webinar number three. All right, sounds good. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna stop the share here. We're gonna go ahead and end this meeting and have a great day, everybody. Oh, there's one more. Bye-bye.